Hi, and welcome back to Marketplace Tech's limited series, Decoding Democracy, where we explore how technology is changing how we participate in the 2024 general election. I'm your host, Kimberly Adams. And today we'll be talking about an annual event known as the DEF CON Voting Village, where hackers work together to identify and fix vulnerabilities in the voting machines used in our elections. So joining us now to talk about it is Catherine Terranova, Executive Director of the Voting Village and the Election Integrity Foundation. Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Kimberly. I'm excited to be here. Can you talk a little bit about what DEF CON is and then what you all do at the Voting Village? Sure. So DEF CON is an annual conference. It is the world's largest hacker convention. The DEF CON is separate from the villages themselves. So DEF CON is made up of about 30 plus villages, everything from the car hacking village to the biohacking village, the maritime village. The voting village started in 2017 after an exemption was added to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act which allowed for third-party research to be done on critical infrastructure. Uh, Voting systems had been deemed critical infrastructure, which is extremely important because that allowed us as third-party security researchers to actually look under the hood of these voting systems. And it's every year in August, just so you know, uh, if anybody would like to attend, it's open to everybody. It's in Las Vegas, and it's typically the second week of August every year. You know, so much misinformation circulates online about voting machines and their integrity and whether or not they're vulnerable to hacking, but you all are there literally trying to, and sometimes succeeding in hacking into voting machines. So how do you work around that sort of do the work that you're trying to do, but not feed into the misinformation narratives? Voting machines are simply computers. We hear the word voting machine and we think some magical system exists within it. But really, at the end of the day, it's just a computer. And everybody that's a computer scientist or that works in IT or tech or any of these industries knows that every system is vulnerable because all computers are human made and humans make errors. They're not sentient. They don't think for themselves. They're not devoid of all error. And so it has been, it has been long known that these, these vulnerabilities exist. Now, a few election cycles ago, this became a very popular and polarized conversation within American households, right? Most people hadn't thought about their voting machines before that or their voting systems or who owns them or what percent of the market value those companies have. This was just not something that you're taught in school or civics or, and if it's not part of your career, it's probably not something you think about. And so. We really lean into the approach of more education, more information, and as much transparency. And so we talk a lot about all the different aspects from AI, misinformation, disinformation, how these things work. We talk about the narratives. We talk about foreign adversaries. We talk about what their intention is as far as trying to fracture our democracy and undermine it in so many ways. So we have like a very um, holistic approach to all of this. A lot of our speakers talk heavily about misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. A recurring speaker we have is uh, the Secretary of State of Arizona's office, uh, Secretary uh, Fontes. He has his CISO, uh, Michael Moore, who's fantastic. He's an educator and an election official that Mm -hmm. focuses a lot about this. They had a whole deep fake presentation this year. So we explore all aspects because all of those things are really critical in protecting democracy. And sometimes there are election officials uh, at these voting village events. Can you talk about what you've seen over the years in terms of how the work that you all do actually gets translated out with election officials and other public officials? Yes. So every year, one of the pinnacles of the voting village is the report that comes out. And these reports are public. They're fully transparent. Nobody signs NDAs. Everybody has access to this information. All of these are actually available on our website from all the previous years, currently votingvillage.org. Every year, we invite uh, election officials to the voting village. We are completely independent, which we pride ourselves on. 
because we have one agenda and one agenda only, and that is to tell the truth and to create transparency around elections. Every year we invite all the three-letter agencies, all U.S. government officials. We send an open letter to all the voting machine vendors. We encourage everyone to participate as much as they're willing. And we definitely do get engagement from election officials. And we do have a collaborative relationship. They do read our reports. Our reports have helped implement changes. And our reports are really helpful when People hear about a vulnerability or, you know, their family member at Thanksgiving, you know, said this thing happened or this hack occurred. You can actually dive into our reports, which go system by system and machine by machine and explain what vulnerabilities are exploitable and what vulnerabilities are not exploitable. Because a lot of people like to take a partial truth, spin it to fit a narrative and try to plug it into a conversation And having that basic understanding of like, well, you know what? I don't actually think that machine works that way. That is very valuable and very helpful and something we try to provide to all voters. Good information for uh, helping facilitate those conversations about figuring (laughs) out what's real online. Thank you so much to Catherine Terranova of The Voting Village. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for everyone joining us on this additional episode of Decoding Democracy. If you have any stories you'd like to share about voting in this election, we'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to like and subscribe. Daniel Shin produced this episode. I'm Kimberly Adams.